So how many shots do you think you waste every round that you play? Now, a lot of these bad shots will be down to your irons. Yes, and in this video, we're gonna be sharing with you the top five iron mistakes that we see amateur golfers make and give you some simple improvements. Now, if you enjoy this, make sure you hit the like and hit that subscribe if you want to improve your game. We launch a video every single week. Let's get to it. So tip number one, and probably the biggest mistake we see on par threes is the incorrect tee height. Teeing it too high when you're on a par three, and it kind of makes sense. Let's tee the ball nice and high so we can hit it high in the air. But the problem is when you do this and tee it too high, you will hit the ball too high on the face. So ideally what we're looking to do is hit it from between the second and the fourth groove on the club face. Now, if you do that, the ball speed will be really good. It'll be plenty of distance, no problem. It'll go the distance you want it to. But if you hit the ball higher than that fourth groove, you're gonna start to lose ball speed, which means the golf ball will go less distance, which means it will obviously come up short. So let's show you these two examples here. We've got two golf balls teed up, and we can see one is perfect. That's a nice tee height where it's just ever so slightly off the ground. And then the second one you can see, that is far too high, but we see that so often. And all this means is when you're doing that, the only way you can hit it well is by trying to lift it off the top. And every other iron shot that you are doing on the golf course, we're trying to actually have a slight descending blow when we hit it. So make sure you don't make this mistake, it's definitely harming your game. Okay, second biggest iron mistake that we see is golfers plan for the perfect shot, they don't plan to miss it. And that sounds strange, great example here, on the 11th here at the Grand, the flag is 136 yards away, it's inviting me to go, let's just go for it. If I go for this flag, 136 yards, if I push it slightly, I'm in the bunker. I've got a horrible stinky bunker shot which I don't want. If I pull it a lot, I'm in the other bunker. So it doesn't really give me much room to miss. Now, think about this. How often do you play golf and hit exactly where you want to hit it? Not that often. Even the best players in the world don't hit it where they want to, but they factor in their miss. So plan to miss rather than plan to hit the perfect shot. So let me walk you through how I would do this. So I've got 136 yards, which normally would be a wedge for me. If I go straight at the flag, it doesn't give me any room for error. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go a little left, but I'm also gonna go a little more deep. I'm actually adding on five or six yards, say let's say 142, because that spot on the green now, I've done this through the Arcos app, it allows me to miss it both sides. I'll miss the bunker on the left if I pull it, but I've gotta go a long way right to miss it um, in the bunker with a wedge. So I'm just picking a spot on the green that allows me room for error to miss that spot. And the chances are I probably will, but I could miss it closer to the hole than my actual spot. So I think the one thing you missed out as well, Andy, was just being short and yes. how often a golf is short on exactly. par threes because of what we just spoke about, but also just in general with their irons, a lot of golfers exactly. are short. You don't so, want to be short here. It's and it's not, oh, I can get that exact, that club there that <laughs> I've hit, you know, that, that one time I've hit it perfectly well. Plan for the average. Let's see if I can hit a shot here now and see where it goes. But 142, it's still a wedge because it's a little downhill and downwind, but I'm not even looking at the flag here. That 142 spot. Okay, I'm looking at that spot now. See where I end up. And here we go, look at this. So that is a slight pull, but I'm on the green. Now, if I'd have actually planned for the shorter one there, I'd have been in the bunker, but at least now I'm on the dance floor. I'm hopefully not gonna three putt, but plan to miss, it's gonna save you shots on the golf course. Mistake number three is overestimating your carry distance with your irons, or maybe just not even knowing what your carry distance is. Now, I think that, look, this is a perfect scenario here, the 14th, it's 145 yards at the Grand, and Andy, that one time I did it, that pitching wedge that went 145 yards. You've never hit it that far. Yeah, <laughs> but there was always that one time when you did hit that pitching wedge 145, or whatever that was, but it probably rolled a long way and the conditions were perfect for you. And was it actually the carry distance? So making sure you know exactly how far or as close as you can to how far all your irons carry is crucial for when you're playing shots. Because in this instance here, this is what would happen. 145 to a front right flag, slightly elevated green. I'd get the pitching wedge out, think I can get there. Before you know it, I hit a nice shot. It pitched on the bank, short spins down and I make double bogey. That can so easily happen to you when you're on the golf course. So the easiest thing, a way of getting this 
done is literally when you play golf, understand I've got 145 yards of the flag, hit the shot. And if it does pitch on the green, you've got a pitch mark and you'll know how far you're hitting it approximately by how far away it is from the flag relative to the shot you've just hit. So that's a real simple way of doing it. It may take a little bit more time, but it's a very organic way of doing it as well because it's true life on the golf course with the golf balls that you would use. The second option is go and see your local pro and get a gapping session done with a launch monitor. That's a lot quicker, obviously, but you still then need to go and test that and verify that when you, go, when you get on the golf course. And the third option, get yourself a, your own launch monitor. Now they're a lot cheaper than they used to be. Like something like a FlightScope Mevo Plus is fantastic at giving you that feedback straight away on your yardages. All right, so let's hit this one. So I'm just gonna go in there with the 9-iron. I had the pitching wedge there, Andy, just in case. Let's see what we've got. All right, a little bit left of the flag, but let's see what the yardage is like. It's okay. not short. Okay, now before we get into tip four, we just wanna tell you guys about a new plan that we've launched, Complete Caddy Guide. You are probably wasting at least five shots around making simple mistakes. What if we told you that not only can you get those shots back, but you also could do it without even changing your golf swing? The golf swing is just one piece of the puzzle. We often make some really simple mistakes in other areas of the game that we're not even aware of. So that's why we've created the Complete Caddy Guide. With this guide, we show you how to develop your best pre-shot routine, how to develop a great strategy, and understand all of the variables that so many golfers don't understand or even just simply misjudge. If you'd like to shoot lower scores without changing your golf swing, then access the Complete Caddy Guide right now. If you sign up in the next 48 hours, you actually get access to me and Pierce in a live webinar where we're gonna help you with your course management and take you through some of this plan. So check it out, the link's in the description. But remember, you've got 48 hours to sign up to also get into that live webinar. It is going to be great and it's gonna save you shots. Okay, so tip number four is hitting it flat out. Most golfers are comfortable with iron shots when they're going flat out, but how often do we get on the golf course and have the perfect number for each iron? Very rare. Now, this is a great example. Here on the 12th at the Grand, I've got 127, which is right in between clubs for me. Now, my gap wedge goes 115, my pitching wedge goes 135. So I'm right in the middle there. Now, most golfers would go, I'll just force the gap wedge. I'll try and go flat out. The issue that we see though, is they lose control, often end up maybe miss striking it, creating too much loft and ending up short. So we want you to practice hitting some softer shots with that club, varying the distance. And here's a very simple way that I do this. I'm gonna go with the pitching wedge here, 127, but I need to take some yardage off. And this is what you need to do on the range as well. First thing you need to do, if you wanna take some yardage off, just narrow the stance. So instead of having a nice wide pitching wedge stance like this, feet are gonna go closer in straight away now. I just can't go at it with the legs as hard. The second thing is, all I'm gonna do now is have a slightly shorter golf swing. You'll probably go shorter anyway, as a result of the stance going a little narrower. And then the third thing is I'm just gonna have a slightly smoother action, just to smoothen the motion out, just to take some speed. And that should get me relatively close to that. But this takes practice. But if you do this on the driving range and you find yourself in between numbers on the golf course, you can now access the yardage that you want. So 127, I'm feeling this. A Little bit of a fade maybe off the left. It's right at the flag. Be the number, beautiful. That is how you take yardage off, but make sure you practice it. Now the fifth and final mistake is actually just bad or poor ball striking. So there's one thing that all really good consistent ball strikers do that if you can do this, you will actually improve your quality of strike. So we call it, can you get to the impact line? So if you take your setup and we have a line coming up from the outside of the lead leg, that's our impact line. Now, if you are back of that when you are striking the golf ball, there's a real high chance you'll be bottoming out before the golf ball, hitting the ground before, hitting a fat shot or hitting it really high and just not being pure and getting compression. If we can get into the impact line, so if the body can get to that impact line quickly in the downswing, by the time you then strike the golf ball, we're gonna be hitting golf ball first, followed by divot after the golf ball, you're gonna be compressing the golf ball and getting what we call the lowest point of the arc after the golf ball. If you can do that, you're gonna get ball turf, as I said, penetrating ball flights, and it's just gonna go further and it's gonna feel so nice when you do this. We've got loads of drills at meandmygolf.com that will help you with this, but how's about this when you're on the golf course? Set up to the side of the golf ball and just have your practice swings so that you brush the grass after where the ball is. 
So you can see I'm focusing my attention. I'm even looking past the golf ball here and I'm allowing the club to hit the ground after the golf ball. This is a great way on the golf course for you to get that lowest point of the swing after the golf ball. So something else you can do as well is hold that finish, hold that finish. Can you do this with a leg? Can you tap the foot on the ground like so? If that's the case, then it probably means that you got to that impact line. Now, how would you like to knock five shots off your score without even changing your goal swing? So complete caddy guide is live now. And also, if you sign up right now before Wednesday at 2 p.m. UK time, within the next 48 hours, you'll get access to our free webinar, which is me and Andy going through the plan and really helping you get around the golf course and showing you how we can save five shots off your score. Thanks so much. And don't forget, click that link in the description. See you later.